In the previous video, we have seen how we delineated the watershed and created the HRUs. In this video, we are going to go through the basics of SWOT Plus Editor. In another video, we are going to go through the more options that SWOT Plus Editor offers. But for now, our aim is to run SWOT Plus and visualize the results. Let's get started. To open SWOT Plus Editor, you click on Edit Inputs and Run SWOT. Click. SWOT Plus Editor is going to initialize our project for us, giving us the paths to the databases and also the project name. Click Start Import. Alright, once it's done, you will see on the left a navigation pane. We will use this to move around our project. Let's click on the Edit SWAT Plus input to get started. Click. We have different sections in the navigation pane. We will start with the climate section and then the simulation section. We will visit all the other sections later in another video. For now, Let's start with the climate section. The climate section allows you to import weather generator data and our weather stations for our catchment. Starting with the weather generator data. If you did not set the option to install the weather generator at the installation stage, you can download it using the link here. Otherwise, you're good to go. Click on import data and it suggests for you the table name in the database. If you have one or more stations in your catchment, you should make sure that you check the Using Observed Weather Data option. This will prevent SWOT Plus Editor from creating stations based on the weather generator data. Check the box. Start Import. And once that is done, you can move on to weather stations. Click. Here, you have an option of using the old weather format or the new weather format. If you do not have weather data for your catchment, visit this link to download the data. On the CFSR website, reanalysis weather data is available for the whole world, and you can select your catchment or your area to get the weather data. To import data, click Import Data. Our data is in SWOT Plus format. So we select SWOT Plus and we select the location where we find our data. Browse. Robit Data. Select the parent folder with a SWOT Plus. Select folder. Click Start Import. All right, now you can see the station has been imported. Precipitation data, temperature, soil radiation, relative humidity, and wind speed. We don't have data for wind direction. Next, we go to the simulation section. Here we have time and print. In time, we select the duration of our simulation. Click time. By default, SWOT Plus Editor fuses this with the length of the weather data. However, we do not want to simulate all the way up to 2013, so we're going to change this to 2000. Save changes. The print section, importantly, allows you to set the warm-up period, which is the number of years where the model doesn't print output. Another important thing is that you can set the objects that you want to print and the time step at which you want to print them. Let's set the warm-up period to two years. Two years. You can also set the ending year of simulation to stop printing output files. For objects, we're going to print the annual average of the water balance for the entire basin. This gives us an idea of the water balance when we want to start our calibration. We're also interested in the water balance at annual average time step for the HRUs. 
which we can map in visualization. We are also interested in the channel output, especially the flow. We are going to select monthly output because we have observations at monthly time step. We are not going to select the daily time step because it will take longer to import the results into the database. Otherwise, you can also select the daily time step and any other time steps you want. Note that the more output you select, the longer it takes to run. So select only what you need. After you are done, click Save Changes and you're good to go. Next, we write the files and then we run the model. So click on Write Input Files, click Save and Write to save the files in the default text in out folder. Start writing files. Once that is done, we can now run our model. So let's go to run the model section. If you have run your model and you have encountered an error, you can click on use debug version to gain more insight into the problem that you're facing. However, it's going to be slower than normal. So we're not going to use the debug version for running our model. Run sort plus. I'm going to speed up the video as this will take some time. Great, our model ran successfully. We can now close this window. And now we can import our results into the database so that we can visualize them when we go back to QSWAT Plus. Click on Analyze Model Output. Click on Import Output. This takes long if you have printed out more output objects. Great, our results have been imported. We can now exit SWOT Plus Editor and return to QSWOT Plus for visualization. Click Exit SWOT Plus Editor. Once we return to QSWOT Plus, we realize that the Visualize option becomes available. This option only becomes available if you have successfully imported your results. To start visualization, click on Visualize. We notice that our map in the canvas has changed. Normally, you will have one scenario, the default scenario at the beginning. But as you calibrate the model or change whether input or output, you might have much more scenarios. However many scenarios that you have, make sure that you have selected the correct one that you want to visualize. In our case, it's only the default scenario, so we don't have to worry about that. Next, we want to choose a sort plus output table. The sort plus output tables that are available are only the ones that you checked to print when you are selecting the print objects in sort plus editor. We are going to start our visualization with evaporate transpiration, and this is going to be at HIU level. We made sure that we check the HRU water balance annual average. So look for it. And you can change the start date and the finish date. But since it's annual average, we're going to have one result for the entire period. Next, we choose the variable ET. Once you have selected the variable, click Add, select the variable, and click Create. Now, in your map canvas, you can see different colors representing different values for evapotranspiration. You can change these colors 
or the view of the map to your liking. Let me demonstrate that. All right. This was a static map. How about if you want to see how the variable changes over time? To do this, select the animation tab and then select the output table. We're going to use evaporate transpiration at HRU again, but at yearly time step. Okay. Select ET. Now we have evaporate transpiration plotted again. This time we have a play button starting from 1992 and our animation is going to end in 2000. Start. You can see that the evapotranspiration is changing with every year. Okay, you can do this with any other variable that you like, even flow. Let's do that. Channel, monthly, flow out, I'm going to deactivate the underlying map and the other one as well, okay, play. This one is going to take longer because it's monthly data. I can speed it up. So you can see the rivers filling up in every rainy season and then drying up when it's dry season. All right. You can also save the animation by clicking on start recording and it's at the beginning, play. I'm gonna stop it. The animation is going to be saved in the results folder inside your default scenario as a GIF file, okay? What if you want to plot the actual hydrograph for each or any of these rivers? To do that, you go to plot, make sure that it's the correct output table, select the channel for the output. Here is where you put the channel in which you have your outlet. You can quickly check that by using the identify feature, select the channel or reaches the rivers and click in our case, number 53 is our main outlet channel. Close that. I'm going to go back and select channel 53. Okay. And what variable do we want to plot? Flow out. Flow out. Don't mind the unit. Add the plot. Select it and click plot. You will need to save a CSV file containing the time series. It's channel 53, save. And here we go, we have a plot. You can save the plot using this button or you can change how it looks using this button. Okay, what if you want to include observations in your plot? I'm going to expand this and choose the observed data file. So in my case, it's going to be inside Ruby data on the desktop and observations. Right click just to check the duration for which we have observations. Edit. We see that we have observations from 1993 for each month 
up to 1997. So we cannot plot before 1993 and we cannot plot after 1997. Close. Then we open the file. Now we can add observed. However, let's adjust the dates. 1993 to December 1997. If you only have part of the data for your selected period, you have an error telling you that you do not have observation data. So you need to know the period for your observations. Okay, we're going to click add observed and plot. We're going to replace the existing file. Replace it. And now we can see the simulated in blue and the observed flow in orange. In this window, we also get information on the performance of our model for this scenario. In our case, the default scenario. We can see that the Nash Sutcliffe efficiency for the monthly time step is 0.45 and the Pearson correlation coefficient 0.77. As I said earlier, you can use this button to save this chart. In the next video, we'll look at more options in Swatplus Editor that can help us in adapting our model for our case study or based on our data.